Vegas is found under the generate category, and this needs something to generate on top of. So I'm gonna make a new solid layer. I'll go up to layer, new solid, and I'll call this Vegas, and apply the Vegas effect straight to it. Now what this effect is going to do by default is look at the alpha channel of whatever you've applied it to, which it calls the image contours, and add these dashed lines all around them. Since my solid layer is the size of the comp, it's pretty hard to see. So I'm actually gonna go into my layer solid settings and change this to a 500 by 500 pixel square. Now we can clearly see those yellow lines showing up all around my square. To make this easier to see, let's skip over everything for now and go right down to rendering. And what I wanna do is change the width of these dashes from two to say 10, so they're nice and thick. I'll also just change the color to white for now. Now you'll notice that this is getting cropped off based on the bounds of my layer. Nothing is rendering outside of my square, but I could fix this very easily by just adding a grow bounds effect before Vegas, which is basically tricking the Vegas effect into thinking the layer is bigger than it is. And I could increase that as much as I need to, but a value of 10 pixels is plenty. Currently the rendering blend mode is set to over, and that means it's going to be over top of the layer that you've applied it to. So it's preserving the contents, but I could change this to transparent and then it will ignore the contents of the layer and only show me what Vegas is generating, or I could change it to under and it will display behind the layer or stencil, which reveals the original layer. So kind of like a track mat. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on the default of over. And let's look at the rest of the render controls. So we've already seen the width. This allows us to control the width of all these dashes, which you can tell are really soft, but that can be fixed with the next property, which is hardness. Let me just increase my grow bounds a little bit. If I increase hardness, this really sharpens everything up, but we still do have some softness between each one of these dashes. And that's because of the next set of controls. These are all the opacity controls for every single dash. First of all, we have start opacity. So this is the start of every dash. And at a value of one, you can think of that as 100%. Next, we have midpoint opacity, which is set to zero, meaning completely transparent. If I turn that up, then it's gonna get a lot more solid. But I could also go to a negative number, and this is going to influence the parts of the dash on either side of wherever the midpoint is, which is set by the next property, midpoint position. If I move this around, it's very subtle, but it is making a difference. If I make this a little bit more drastic and then just shift this around, you'll see it more noticeably. And then finally we have end opacity. So if I turn that all the way up to 100%, it's gonna get again, a lot more solid. Moving this midpoint around is now going to kind of shift around where that trail is of each dash. And I'll make this a little bit more clear by shrinking this down and then turning the opacity of that midpoint down as well is going to show you a little more clearly how it's being shaped. So let me turn the start and end to 100% and the midpoint all the way down to negative one and then shift that midpoint around and you can see how that influences the dash. So if I set that to a value of 0.5, that's going to be halfway between the start and end of every dash. And I could turn the opacity up a little bit to get this kind of wavy looking dashed stroke. All right, now that we've looked at those rendering controls, I'm gonna reset the whole effect, just change this back to white and maybe make the width a little bit bigger and turn that hardness all the way back up. Now let's jump back to the top where we have the stroke being generated by the image contours. I could change this to a mask path. So if I just draw a simple mask path, maybe I'll just make a circle, then it's automatically gonna jump to that, even though I haven't changed image contours because this mask is actually shaping the contours or the alpha channel of my solid layer. But if I were to change my mask from add to none, then it's not doing anything. It's just a mask on top of the layer, but it's not affecting anything about that layer. However, if I now set the stroke property to mask path and choose my mask one as that mask path, it's going to generate Vegas on top of that regardless of the image contours. Now this only works for one path at a time. There's no all paths checkbox. So if I duplicated this mask and moved it, it's not going to apply Vegas to it. I would have to swap to a different mask in order for that to work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those masks and change this back to image contours. And we have a lot of options for how to handle the image contours. The input layer by default is set to none, and that means it's actually just going to look at the layer that you've applied the effect to, but we could change this to any other layer. So for example, if I brought out my logo, which has an alpha channel to it, and I chose that as the input layer, then Vegas is going to look at the contours of my logo and apply it to that solid. Now this grow bounds effect is offsetting where it's displaying, so I'm gonna get rid of that for now. 
I don't think I've ever used a different input layer than the default, the layer I'm applying it to, but you can do it. And if I make this, you know, the size of my comp, then we're gonna see almost the entire logo showing up in here. The reason we're not seeing the whole thing is because it's based on the intensity channel, not the alpha channel. If I switch that, then we're gonna see all of my logo. It's not gonna be based on brightness values of any of the colors, just the pure alpha channel. Like I said, I don't think I've ever chosen a different input layer than the original, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete that solid, and we'll use my logo as an example from here on out. So let me apply the Vegas effect to it, turn that color to white again and make it thicker as well as much more solid. And actually that's a little hard to see, so let's pick a color that's really easily visible over top of my logo. So maybe just this hot pink color, okay? Again, I'll go into the image contours and change that from intensity to alpha. But point out that you have lots of controls for how to handle that channel. So my logo is very solid. The pixels are either on or off. There's no semi-transparent pixels. So it's very easy for this effect to define those image contours and apply the Vegas effect to it. But if you were applying this to something that had semi-transparent pixels or not as defined of an edge, maybe I blur this out a little bit, then we can use these controls to kind of shape the image contours a little bit more easily. This is a really extreme example, but I could turn the threshold up or down and it's basically saying, how transparent can a pixel be to be considered part of the contour? So that's the threshold. There's pre-blur, so if I turn my fast box blur off and increase the pre-blur, it's basically doing the exact same thing, blurring out the alpha channel before applying Vegas. And then we have tolerance, and this is actually a little misleading. It's not like the threshold, this is more of how many segments there are to generate smooth curves on top of your image. So if I turn this tolerance way up, then these lines are gonna get a lot more straight. There's a lot more jagged edges between curves. And in fact, let me go into the rendering and turn the midpoint and end opacity up to one and turn that width down a little bit. So you can see this is a basically low poly version of my outline. The more I increase the tolerance, the more simplified that outline will be. And if I turn that tolerance all the way down, we're gonna get a lot more segments and it's gonna fit the contours much more tightly. The next property is this render property and it's set to all contours, but I can change this to a selected contour. And then it's going to find one block of pixels that counts as an image contour and apply Vegas to it. And if I increase this value one at a time, then it's gonna jump from one contour to the other. So this allows you to be very specific about where you're applying the Vegas effect. I'm gonna change that back to all contours. And the next property is shorter contours have, and it's defaulted to same number of segments. And this will be easier to see if I turn that end opacity back down to zero, the midpoint opacity back down to zero as well. What this means is that contours that are basically shorter, that have less surface area, have the same number of segments, which is why it looks like there are way more dashes on this part of my logo than on this part right here. The dashes are much longer. It looks like there are far fewer. The reality is they have the same number of dashes. They're just being crammed into very different lengths. So if I change this from same number of segments to fewer segments, then all of the dashes are going to be uniform across my logo or whatever you apply it to, regardless of how much surface area there is. This is generally how I set up Vegas so that it has a consistent look. That's it for the image contours options. If I scroll back up, I skipped over this checkbox right here, invert input, this just inverts the channel. So if I check that on, the strokes on top of my logo don't change, but the outer edges of the layer now have that stroke applied. And then finally we have this if layer sizes differ, and this applies to if you're using a different input layer, it's basically just allowing you to center the texture or stretch it to fit. All right, I'm gonna collapse up image contours and we'll move on to segments. This affects how these dashes actually look. So by default, we have 32 segments. I could increase this value much higher though, all the way up to a maximum value of 250 to get much tighter dashes across my entire image or all the way down to a value of one. And this applies one long dash across each image contour in my logo. I'm gonna turn this up to a much higher value so we can see each individual dash clearly. And the next option is a length. It's set to one by default, meaning that every dash basically butts up against the one on either side of it. And if I turn that midpoint opacity and end opacity all the way up, you can see exactly that. But if I turn that length down a little bit, then it's basically going to trim the length of each dash, giving a gap 
between each dash. So if you wanted to have that faded out look, we could turn the midpoint opacity and the end opacity back down to zero and control the length using that length property. Next is segment distribution, and this is dependent on the length. If I set this back to a value of one, then even or bunched is going to give the exact same result. But if I turn the length down and change this from even to bunched, that's still going to align all of the dashes end to end, but allows us to rotate with this next property, all of those dashes around the image contours. So they're all still in line, but allows you to shift it around the contours. You can especially see that right here as I'm increasing or decreasing this value. And along those lines, we have a random phase checkbox, which basically randomizes the start point of each one of those strokes so that you get a more random look. And if you're not happy with the look, you always have this random seed value, which will just give you a unique starting point for every change in that value. I'm gonna change this back to even, uncheck random phase, and turn the rotation back down to zero and show you that the rotation still applies even if you're using the even segment distribution. So you can easily animate these lines along those contours regardless of how you're distributing those dashes. And that's really it for the Vegas effect. Now, there are so many applications to how you could use this effect. There's no way I could cover them all in one tutorial. But one of my favorite ways is to have an animated outline of a text layer. So let's turn my layer off and I'll just add in some text and let's just make that all caps for good measure and scale it up and then apply the vegas effect to it now i want to change the blend mode from over to transparent and we'll just make the color white i want to make that a thicker line turn up the hardness go into the image contours and make sure that's set to alpha channel and change the shorter contours have to fewer segments so that it's uniform across all the text and then go into the segments and turn them down so that there's not quite as many. And maybe that's a little too thick, so I'm gonna turn that back down to say five for the width of the text, but keep that hardness all the way to its max value. I think I wanna turn the midpoint and end opacity all the way up, and this is basically what I want my text to resolve to. So I'm gonna go forward in time maybe two seconds and set a keyframe on the length as well as the rotation. Then I'll back up to the start of my composition and then rotate this backwards a bit and turn the length all the way down. Now with just four keyframes, if I play this back, I have these animated dashes coming on, rotating around the contours and extending out to reveal my text. Now that rotation might be a little bit extreme, so I'm going to just dial that back a little. And now it's a little less extreme and I could make this look a lot more interesting if I go into my graph editor, after easy easing those values and let's say go to the length and really crank up the ease in to the second keyframe, as well as the rotation, I'll increase that to be more extreme and then maybe shorten the entire animation so it's not quite so long to animate on. And very quickly with just a couple of keyframes, I've created a very interesting text reveal. And what's great about this is it's a text layer. So I could change this to anything else and the animation is gonna be preserved. From here, I could play around with maybe how many dashes there are. Maybe I only want one segment for each contour. I'll turn that all the way down. And now a single line is stroking each one of these contours and animating on in a very nice fluid way. I could also increase the rotation amount so that that moves around the text a little bit more extremely. And if I did a little bit more work, I could say change the image contours to only select one contour and for some reason it's choosing the G to be number one, but I could go to say the A and then duplicate this and select each one of these in order. And I'm just gonna speed through this quickly so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it. And now that I have an individual layer for each one of these contours, I can just say trim this down to two frames. So Alt right square bracket on the second frame to trim them all equally then select my layers in order that I want them to animate. So from the bottom layer all the way to the top while holding shift, right click, go to keyframe assistant and down to sequence layers, and then just click okay, and it will align them end to end. Then I'll go to the end of my composition, hold alt or option and press the right square bracket to extend the out points of all the layers to that. But now my animation is going to be staggered two frames apart for each contour. And I'm gonna get something that looks a lot more complex. Again, it did not take that much work, 
but creates a very complex looking animation. And this is just one of an endless number of applications of this effect. There are so many amazing uses for it. And in fact, I'm gonna to link to one in the description of this video from none other than Andrew Kramer. Go check that out and start using this effect to figure out how you could use it. It could be representing data traveling along a circuit board or custom paths or traffic flow on top of a map. Since you can apply it to any channel, not just alpha, but color channels or intensity, you can really customize this to look however you want. In fact, let me show you on top of this photo of some thorns. If I apply it, it's going to look for the intensity of the pixels to generate a contour on. So if I go into my render settings again, turn the segments all the way down, turn the end opacity and the midpoint opacity all the way up, then I can clearly see what's being considered a contour. And if I go back into my image contours options, I could adjust that threshold to kind of dial in where this stroke is going to be applied. I could use that pre blur to kind of simplify it a little bit. I could even invert the input so that it's looking more at the dark pixels rather than the light pixels to generate the stroke on top of. And I'll go ahead and turn the tolerance all the way down too so I get a nice high quality stroke. Then I can customize this to look however I want. So maybe I wanna add some bright teal, maybe greenish outlines to everything, make it a little bit thicker, turn down the end opacity and the midpoint opacity, maybe turn those segments up this time, making sure to keep everything uniform with fewer segments set here, turn down the length, and to make these stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna change it to transparent, duplicate the layer, and remove the Vegas effect from the layer below. That way I can change the blend mode to add, maybe add a glow effect after Vegas, play around with these properties to get something that just stands out a little bit more, maybe make the green a little more intense, a little bit wider, and then I could set some keyframes on the rotation and just create these kind of glowy green worms that are moving all around these thorns. And Vegas is just doing a great job of creating this effect. So jump in there, get your hands dirty, play around with Vegas and see what you can come up with. But that's everything you need to know about the Vegas effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.